Hey guys, thank you for watching this video. If you're new here, I'm Elton, a 50-something year old, undertaking a long-term photography project in my 1996 Heimer. So you can expect to see travel photography, photography and video from historical sites that I visit, landscape and nature photography, wildlife and animal photography from around my travels, and also video tutorials, camera gear reviews, um, and hints and tips of van life and long-term travel. So please do join me and hit that subscribe button. Hey folks. So it's been just over eight months actually since I started uh, doing pet sitting. Um, and I just thought I'd give you an update to how it's going, my thoughts about it as a viable option for other fan lifers out there looking for a way to kind of get around and see the UK and further abroad even. Um, so I started off on a site called Trusted House Sitters. Um, it's an international site, I believe headquartered in the in the US. Um, and it uh, basically you pay a yearly subscription and you can create a profile either as a, um, a pet sitter or as a pet owner. And then it's kind of a matchmaking service. So you as a home owner would post your requirements or your, your listing and you put your dates that you're looking for some for someone and then pet sitters essentially apply for that set. Um, you then go through it as a home owner, go through the applications and arrange to have a video call with the people that interest you. So in theory, it works pretty well included in that in that fee, that uh, subscription fee. Both parties get insurance so that should anything go wrong, both parties are covered. Um, but it, yeah, I've got my issues with the platform. Um, but I won't go into those in, in, in this particular video because this is more just an update of you know how the pet sitting is going etc and from a van life point of view um so yeah i mean i must have i think as you can see i'm clearing on in my house uh, in my van um i'm in a in a, on a pet sit at the moment for two cats and i think this is the 17th 17th sit i've done since the 22nd of january um so pretty much i've been back to back and that's been a combination of free sets from trusted house sitters and a few paid sets in between um and i've sat for primarily dogs initially um cats obviously chickens sheep uh goats what else have i sat for so far i think that's it sadly um yeah, I think that's that's it at the moment. <clears throat> um, what I have found through my experience so far is that dog sits especially take a lot of your time, um, which, you know, it's dogs, they require more attention than cats, chickens, for example, obviously. Um, but what I was finding is that most pet owners who post on trusted house sitters and other places say that their dogs can't be left for more than three or four hours um fine that's you know that's what the dog is used to there are a few who say the dog can't be left at all which you know if you know anything about dog behavior isn't ideal for the dog's mental health um there is science out there that suggests that dogs being alone in their own company for a few hours is actually beneficial for them because they can just get out of their own head and you know out of the whole please my master mindset um, <clears throat> and not worry about pack leaderships and pack priorities and all that kind of nonsense so it actually is beneficial for dogs to have alone time um, however you know lockdown dogs and things there are a lot of dogs who just have no ability to be alone because they've never been made to be alone sadly um, but anyway what I found is that because of that requirement that you know you can't leave a dog for more than three or four hours getting out and exploring isn't really an option um, unless you're kind of exploring the immediate area you know if you're going to go somewhere that's going to take you an hour to drive to and an hour to get back you've then got two hours to quickly do your exploration 
Um, you know, and if you're going to travel two hours, and the expense of traveling two hours, and you probably want to explore for more than two hours. So, yeah, I was finding that I was very restricted in my ability to actually explore when I was house sitting for dogs. Um, which is why I started implementing, started doing paid sits for dogs. So I now don't do free sits where there's a dog or dogs involved, um, primarily for that reason, is that I my freedom is being uh, impacted. I can't go out for the day. So therefore I want to be in reimbursed for that, you know, my freedom being taken. Um, so what I'm doing now is I'm continuing doing free sits, but it sits for cats and pet, you know, uh, livestock like chickens, lambs, uh, sorry, sheep, um, cows, that kind of stuff, where it's just a matter of feeding them in the morning and the evening. Um, in the case of chickens, looking for any eggs and cleaning the, the poo. Um, but then you've got your day essentially to go out. Um, so typically, uh, you know, I'm only taking sits where the cats are outdoor cats and they don't need you to be there all day long. Because what I'm finding on this set where it's two brothers and they are outdoor cats is that I typically see them in the morning, they come for a little bit of a scratch um, and a rub, then they'll have their food and their water and then they're off hunting for the day or doing whatever cats do out in the wild. Um, and then I'll see them again around six, seven o'clock in the evening when they come back for food. Um, and then they kind of snuggle up in the living room while I watch TV and they'll occasionally come over for a stroke and a cuddle. Um, but it gives me my day free. You know, I, I can go out for the day if I chose to. Um, so that, you know, I don't mind doing a free sit in those circumstances where I do have the freedom to go out in the daytime and do, do my thing. Um, so, yeah, if you're considering pet sitting as a potential option for you as a van lifer, or if you're considering, you know, how would you, where would you stay or how, how much, because one of the things obviously that comes with house sitting, whether you're doing it for free or being paid, is that you're not paying for a pitch. You know, if you're not someone who's comfortable wild parking, which in England can be horrendously difficult, um, then this is an option because you do get to park up on people's properties um, rather than just, you know, wild parking with the potential of getting moved on during the night or something like that, or, you know, worse, being harassed or something. Um, so whether you do it for free or you're doing it for paid, there is that benefit that you would be saving your pitch fees, for example. And also you're getting to move around the country. Um, you know, like I said, Trusted House Sitters does, does sits worldwide. So at the moment, because of Shaka, my dog, um, I'm confined to the UK quite happily. No intention for him to pass on anytime soon. Um, but that's my reality. I do sit in the UK because that's where I'm confined to right now. But once he moves on, once he crosses the, the Rainbow Bridge, I will then look to go further afield. And again, pet sitting is an option when I go into Europe or, you know, if I want to go to America somewhere for two weeks, there are always sits in America. There are sits worldwide. Um, so there is opportunity to go and travel the world by doing free pet sitting. Um, so it is very much a viable option if you like animals, because this is not something you want to do if you're not an animal person, believe me. It's not fair on the animals um, and it's not fair on the owners if you take this on just to kind of save yourself some money or get free accommodation or whatever the case may be. So please just do this if it is something that you are passionate about, you do enjoy time with animals, etc. Preach over. Um, but yes, yeah, so as I say, whether it's good for you will obviously depend on your requirements. Um, Getting paid sits is significantly more difficult when you're nomadic. Because um, obviously I'm in a few pet sitter groups, etc. And I've cre actually created my own pet sitting group. So if you're a pet owner in the UK or a pet sitter in the UK, check the link in the description and come and join us. Um, but yeah, I've joined a few of these groups. And what I'm finding is that sitters who are 
you know, have a base, have a house, they supplement their pet sitting because pet sitting, you're not, you know, you're working for less than minimum wage essentially. You get, I mean, pet sitting varies between forty pounds to I've seen some advertised for eighty pounds per day, and that's kind of a base rate, and then it's an X amount per additional pet. So for me, for example, I charge, if it's a cat, I charge 30 pounds a day. And then for each additional cat, I charge five pounds. If there's chickens, I charge five pounds for the, you know, for as many chickens as they are, not per chicken. Uh, if there's sheep, I charge five pounds, assuming it's just basic feeding in the morning and evening. Um, others charge a higher base rate and then the additional charges on top of that so, you know, you're not getting minimum wage. If you worked eight hours at minimum wage, you'd be getting, you know, 85 pound a day or whatever it was. Um, so what other pet sitters do to supplement that is that they also do dog walking or drop-ins. Um, so for dog walking, they're typically charging around 15 pound an hour. Um, and if you can fit in three or four of those around your pet sitting jobs, because, you know, ultimately you are, you can leave, pets if it's a dog for you know three to four hours um so you can maybe fit in three or four walks in your day um so they you know they, they kind of make it work by being static but when you're not static when you're nomadic you don't have that community of people you can reach out to to offer the dog walking to to offer drop-ins to etc um so getting paid sets is significantly more difficult when you're nomadic. Um, for me, since January, complete disclosure, I've had two paid customers. Um, and one has booked me for, I've, I've done one set for him, and he's booked me for two, another set in September and another set in October. And then I've got a new client. First time I'm sitting for them is end of October. Um the rest have been free and I'm okay with that because I've now sussed out that actually I'm not going to do free sits for dogs because of the time requirement um, and that I will only focus on doing sits for either just a house sit where there's no animals or house sits where there's cats that are a bit more independent and small pets, lizards, snakes, whatever they, you know it may be. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where I'm at at the moment. I'll continue doing the pet sitting because I do enjoy being around animals. Um, Shaka is of an age now where his mobility is very limited. Um, I took him for a walk today. I think it was probably about not not even half a mile and he was completely knackered. And by the time we were coming on the return journey, he had a few... Um, power outages so we say where one of the limbs just gave way under him so yeah he's not very mobile which means he can't walk very far which means and he just sleeps most of the time now to be honest um he's been sleeping since that walk which was about four hours ago um so you know having access to other animals especially dogs when i'm on a paid set is great because they can come out with me i can take the camera and we can go out for hours and hours and hours um but yeah i just wanted to give you an update on you know the viability of pet sitting for someone who is nomadic uh, doing the van life uh, lifestyle um but ultimately as i say it's down to your requirements um you know, on sites like Trusted House Sitters, you can find sits for a few days, a week, two weeks, six months. So, you know, if you're not someone who wants to constantly be traveling, there are longer sit opportunities. If you're one who wants to travel a bit more often, then maybe you opt for the two or three days. At the moment, because I'm in my van, because I tow a bike, obviously I'm restricted into to homes or houses that have sufficient land for me to park the van. Um, and in the UK, there's a lot of homes that don't have a driveway, um, especially in cities. I mean, London, no chance. Um, so I am restricted in that way. And the fact that I travel with Shaka also will be putting some people off. So I do foresee, you know, once 
once Schalke does cross the, the Rainbow Bridge, that it may become easier for me to find sits also because there are a lot of people who, despite the fact that I've done 17 pet sits now and Schalke has never met any of those animals that I've sat, those people are obviously going to be concerned that, you know, especially if their dog is reactive or they think Schalke may be reactive, which he is in his old age, um, that they, they might, you know, engage with each other and stuff. But because of Schalke's reactiveness, I don't socialize him with, with the dogs or the pets that I'm sitting. Um, but I do think that, you know, once he crosses the rainbow, and again, just to be clear, I'm not wishing his life away. I want him with me as long as possible, um, that things will become easier then. If, for example, I mean, I've even had thoughts that it is viable if you like to do pet sitting, that you could actually either store your van or not even need one. Um, because essentially every pet sit you do, the homeowner has set a room aside for you to sleep in. So you don't actually need the van. Um, so it's an idea I'm toying with when I go abroad. Um, is whether I travel by bike. And if I travel by bike, I will actually be buying a bigger bike than what I've got now, a motorbike. Um, something like a BMW uh, GS, where I've got the panniers and I can have all my essentials and stuff with me and I can just tour by bike, knowing that I've got places to stay uh, if I set up back-to-back -back pet sitting gigs. Um, but there are a lot of options and, you know, one thing I've got to make clear in these videos, because it doesn't seem to get be getting through to some people, um, is that everyone's van life experience is different and unique. We've all got our reasons for doing it. We've all got our boundaries of things we will and won't do. Uh, we've all got our preferences. You know, some people are quite happy to wild camp. Other people aren't fond of the idea. And I would assume that especially single woman might not be keen on the idea of rough uh, of wild parking in in especially england um i think if you can find a more remote location like up in scotland and some parts of wales you, it will be fine but when you primarily in built up areas in the uk and um you know there, there's always the risk of being harassed there's always the risk of being moved on in the middle of the night etc so you know, it's important because I did have a comment on a video a couple of couple of videos back, I think, um, where I was saying about the difficulties of van life and someone was saying that, oh, it's not difficult. And for him, it may not be. For him, it, you know, I don't know his van life experience. I'm not sure if he works, if he's self-employed, what he does. And ultimately... You know, I've met someone who's retired and just lives on a campsite for 10 years. That's all he's done. There's no drama in his life because he doesn't have to worry about earning an income. He's getting his retirement and that's enough for him. Um, I'm not retired. I might look like I'm retired, but I'm not retired. I'm still a long way off from it. Um, so I've still got to earn an income and therefore... I have to stress about some things in my life. You know, as much as I'd love to just not worry about anything, I'm not in that position right now. So for now, there's things I've got to do, things I've got to, um, you know, make sacrifices for, etc., to get in place. Anyway, we've gone off on a tangent here again. Whether pet sitting is for you or not is down to you. But like I said before, please don't do it if you're not an animal lover, if you're not fond of being around animals, because it is a responsibility that you should take seriously. Someone's entrusting you with their home and their pets, so, you know, show some respect. Um, but yeah, for me personally, it's absolutely a viable option and one that I've really, really enjoyed. I've met some really nice homeowners. I've only met one homeowner that was not polite. Um, but the rest of them have been great. I've formed some friendships with some of them where I've had some of them invite me back 
to come and see them as a holiday without actually needing to look after their pets or anything. Um, I've had people offer that I can come and stay there for two, three weeks. I just need a downtime. So, you know, it's a great opportunity to meet people, see different parts. I mean, I've seen some parts of the country I wouldn't have thought to have gone to otherwise if it wasn't for the pet sitting. Um, so, yeah, absolutely viable in my opinion. Um, something for you to consider and think about. But, yeah, just wanted to give you an update on how things were going after eight months. I hope it's been useful, guys. Until next time, be safe, be kind, and be happy. Cheers.